So let us talk about the new chapter in development economics that is uh, comparative economic development. This is chapter two from Todaro and Smith. So we have a lot to cover in this chapter. I think I'll uh, take around uh, maybe five or six sessions to complete this. And uh, so we'll start with uh, what are the common features of the developing nations? All of these developing, all developing nations, uh, more or less, they have the lower levels of living and productivity. And we have to go in detail about all of them later on. So this is just a starting, just to start that we are talking about, about developing countries and what are the features of those developing countries? How do you classify developing countries? And how do you measure the uh, the income comparisons between the countries? That is what we are going to do in this class. And then we will take up each of these measure and go in detail about uh, each of them with examples. So the first one is simple lower levels of living and productivity. So in these developing countries, uh, the levels of living is very low. Productivity is very low. Human capital is very low. So by human capital, you mean the level of education, level of skill people have. They have, they have lower levels of human capital. Uh, inequality is very high. So in these countries, the level of income inequality, consumption inequality, wealth inequality is very high. And the absolute poverty is very high. So... Uh, absolute amount of people who are living below the poverty line that is very very high right these countries are characterized by huge population growth rates so they don't have low fertility rate they have huge population growth rates and uh, there are societies divided into various castes on, on in terms of various uh, races so greater social fractionalization is there Larger rural population is there. Popula rural population is very high. Wow. And not only that, uh, uh, there is a rapid rural to urban migration. So many people, they migrate from rural to urban, uh, urban cities. This happens in our country also. Lower levels of industrialization and manufactured exports. So industrialization is not up to the mark. When I say up to the mark, means up to the mark of the, of the developed countries. Uh, most of these developing countries, they're not exporting manufactured goods, right? Means high level manufactured goods. Geography is adverse. We talk about it. Um, underdeveloped financial and other markets are also there. Financial markets are not developed means that you do not have proper developed credit markets. Uh, you do not have proper developed land markets, labor markets, uh, lingering colonial impacts. So what do you mean by this? That most of these developing countries in the past, they have been ruled by, uh, by, by colonial powers. And uh, it had the impact in the psyche of the population also, it had the impact. And there is varying degrees of external dependence. So it's like uh, many of these developing countries, they look for validation from the, from the developed nations. And they also are dependent upon the developed world for many things. For example, social de dependence is there, economic dependence is there, even cultural dependence is there. Right? So we'll talk about each of them with proper examples uh, as we move on uh, into the classes. Now, the question is that how do you define this developing world? So one, you can define this on the basis of income as World Bank has defined. So they, this, they say this, that there are lower income countries whose per capita income is $875, less than $875. There are lower middle income countries whose per capita income is between $876 and $3465. Upper middle income countries and high income countries who have incomes per capita income more than $10,725. Not only this, they say this, that they there is a classification of the other high income countries also. So, so even in the developing nations, there can be few high income countries also. But they give an example that some of these countries might have only few developed export sector. For example, oil. There's only one mainly developed sector, developed export sector. On, on the basis of that, there is a high income. There is high income in that country. For example, Kuwait, Qatar, UAE right there is an another 
classification other among other high income countries so maybe they might be tourism dependent islands so they can be few islands i mean they are in the developing world but they are still earning very high because most of uh, tourists they, they go to that country then there are uh, even high income oecd countries are there but you can still call them as developing for example portugal greece one another uh, classification which has been made about uh, about the newly industrialized nations is uh, that some of these nations they have achieved relatively higher developed manufacturing sector so because of that you call these countries although these are developing but because their manufacturing sector is going very high uh, so you call them as newly industrialized economies now the question is that how do you measure development for quantitative comparisons across countries so one way is that you do gnp per capita comparison guys you know this from national income accounting course that uh, domestic plus nfia is equal to national this much you know right you know what is gdp gdp is all people who are living in my country whether they are resident or non resident they are producing some output the value of that output in a particular year i mean market value of that so that's not a very um, proper definition but i'm just giving an idea to make my point whether anyone who is a resident or a non resident producing an output the market value of that output in a given year that is what gdp is right now there is a possibility that some people some some of your residents they are living abroad so for example indian people living in us so us will be paying to indian people na so that is a part of your income so that is the factor income from abroad right now there are some us people who are living in india you will be giving some money to them so that is a factor payment to abroad so i add my income i deduct my payment that is net factor income from abroad right so you add uh, to gdp net factor income from abroad you get what gnp is right the point which they are trying to say is that uh, if there are if there is a huge non resident population which is living in uh, your country supposedly you will be making huge payments to them right then the value of this gdp gnp can be very different uh, and they also make it a point and they say this that in 2005 if you look at the total national income of all the nations of the world you will find this at 45 trillion dollars right out of that 35 trillion dollars was produced only in developed countries while 10 trillion dollars was produced in developing countries right it shows what although developing countries is uh, having 5 by 6 of the total population but they are they are producing just 10 trillion dollars out of the 45 trillion dollars so you can see i mean how much is the gap the another point is about the purchasing power parity the another thing is about the purchasing power parity now before i tell you about the purchasing power parity i want to take you through a very simple example right so just have a look at this supposedly there are two countries one country is us other country is india right and uh, there is one product let's say that product is x and that is costing 10 in us right and uh, it is costing let's say 100 rupees in india okay and the exchange rate is forex rate is your uh, 1 us dollar is equal to 15 rupees i'm just giving an example right 
Okay. Now what you do is that you, um, in case if you would have spent ten dollars, right, in India. Yeah. So what uh, is going to be the part? What is going to be there? That is. Uh, Fifteen. That is one fifty rupees. If you convert those ten dollars in India, you will be getting one fifty rupees, right? So, according to the foreign exchange rate, this product X would cost one fifty rupees. Huh? But actually, it is costing only hundred rupees. It is not costing you one fifty rupees. You understand that? You understand that? According to the forex rate, this this should cost one fifty rupees, but actually it is costing only hundred rupees, right? But now just take up an example in which the same thing is there, but using PPP, but using PPP, right? So in case of PPP, you say what ten dollars is hundred rupees now for this X. So the exchange rate should also be this. That is uh, one dollar is equal to ten rupees, right? One dollar is equal to ten rupees. Okay, so it means this should be the per, uh, purchasing power parity exchange rate. So if you convert ten dollars uh, in India, then you will get hundred rupees. So, using purchasing power parity, whether you buy it in India, it is costing you 100 rupees, or you buy in US, it is costing you 100 rupees, right? So, that is the point. That is the point, right? Uh, the point is, if you use uh, foreign exchange rate, then what happens is that uh, the your your per capita income they will look lesser uh, per capita income of the least developed countries they will look lesser but if you look at the per capita income using purchasing power parity you will find this that it is going to look more the difference between the developed country in per capita income and developing countries per capita income using purchasing power parity will be less if you use purchasing power parity and the difference between developed country per capita income and developing countries per capita income using foreign exchange factor will be more right so this is what the concept of purchasing power parity is so there are if you do the comparison of the per capita income using purchasing power parity, you would not find a very exaggerated difference between the developed and developing countries. Because in general, what is also true is that in developing countries, things are going to cost you less. So if you take up the exchange rate according to that, it is going to give you a better answer for comparison instead of just using the foreign exchange conversion factor. Right. So I hope it was clear to you. So thank you, Peter.